Okay, I'm recording. So let's start off. If you could say and spell your first and last name for me, please. Uh, first name is Raymond, R-A-Y-M-O-N-D. Last name Jones, J-O-N-E-S. Great. And, okay. And so you're looking at me. This is good. All right. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? Where did uh, you grow up? Uh, born and raised in Winnipeg here um, in the Fort Rouge area. And... Um, I had attended school um, in the Fort Rouge area, Earl Grey, and uh, for 10 years, it seemed like a long time, uh, it, was, um, it was a great uh, a great time in Fort Rouge. Uh, I, got into, um, I got into the uh, air conditioning trade and stuff like that in, uh, in, the, in the 80s, and um, was there for, still, still employed by uh, certainly uh, an air conditioning firm, or actually gone to the University of Manitoba. I uh, have a wife and uh, very, very supportive of me uh, with all the uh, crazy things that I do. And I try to certainly uh, support her in many things that she does too. So it's, um, yeah. What are the crazy things that you do? Tell me about them. Uh, well, I, and, uh, there's, um, I, I tend to want to try to excel in, in, in my running career, the marathon running. And um, I've done uh, many, many marathons. 34 marathons, uh, basically in total. I've, uh, um, uh, all, I've done. Uh, I call them Tin Man, mar uh, tin man um, triathlons. Uh, that was started back in uh, 82, 83, when it was in Morden, Manitoba, and um, it was an interesting uh, time then for no uh, the way things had uh, had just gone. Uh, the, this is the swimming, cycling, and the and the running. What, what involves it takes a lot of your time to do these type of things so it's, it's really uh, a lot of good to do and uh, even did uh, decided we went on a cruise one time and I decided to um, run a marathon on the ship so I ran uh, 130 circles around that deck so I was in, it was through Alaska and it happened to be uh, uh, there's people walking on the deck and they're all disappearing on me because it started to rain and snow and then uh, it cleared up again after that. Oh. You use the term Tin Man Marathon. What does that mean? Well, tin, it was actually a Tin Man Triathlon. It or was sorry, a, yeah, yeah. Yes, it was a triathlon. Uh, what it uh, was, it's half of an Ironman. Uh, it's um, a 1.2 mile swim, followed by a 56 mile uh, cycle, and then um, a 13.1 mile run. Um, yes, that's what it consists of. Yeah. And so, <clears throat> why did you start? You say you started in that in the early '80s, so you were about 30 years old at the time. Uh, no, I would have been. Uh, or like early 20s. Uh, yeah, mid 20s. Yes, okay. I was. Um, I decided that I wanted to start doing some activity and exercise, and um, that was one of the, um, I, I guess, sports that I fell in love with at the time. And um, I was, um, yeah, I was between jobs at the time and I decided you know yeah I do need some something to keep me busy to, you know and uh, so from 81 to 84 I I did a couple of triathlons one in Falcon Lake the very first one and um, then we moved it out to Morden Manitoba which it's it is still there today and I'm not sure the name of, of what they call it at this time but uh, yeah it was a lot of fun and what what was it that that has now, like for thirty years, kept you going on it? Um, good question. It was um, I had I had exercise right till um, I guess probably in the early nineties, and I had to kind of quit because of my job. It was uh, so um, it was, um, I had lots of work uh, that were late hours, and I couldn't get up to do the training that I wanted for, especially the the uh, triathlons and such so uh, uh, I kind of kept it low and uh, did some running lots uh, some running and I and I participated in a lot of the Manitoba marathon events uh, whether it be um, a relay um, half marathon or the full marathon uh, during that time so and then I continue to uh, certainly do the, uh, the Manitoba marathon to this day and and what is it about running that like what? What does it give you? What does it do for you? Like to to these are, you know, to run a marathon. It, it's not just not just anybody does it, right? I couldn't do it. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, why it, why do you do that? Why would you do that? It's it, it's certainly something that uh, it, it's it's I find um, 
sometimes I'll find a rush on it uh, or uh, I enjoy uh, just clearing my mind and uh, there's days that I, I, I don't want to uh, go out there and, uh, and run but once I get going it's, I just enjoy it out there. Uh, there's times I don't even take music with me and I'll run uh, for two, three hours on end and uh, not think anything of it. And uh, yeah, so it's it's great. And wh one other crazy things that I, uh, not crazy, I'll say, but I, I had uh, um, in 2013. I decided I needed a goal, and I decided to run outdoors every single day. And I was able to do it for 365 days. And I ended up doing 2,160 miles. It was uh, minus minus 46 minus yeah with the wind chill and. Uh, I was able to do a little bit of recording, but the phone would kind of freeze up on me, and I have to warm it up a little bit. But it was, yeah, it was one. That was a, another uh, fun time after I got through that one. That was good. Wow, yeah. that's 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 pretty cool. <laughs> so you did every day, no matter what the weather was like. Absolutely, eh? I made a point of it. Uh, like it's 2013. I re uh, we were in um, we were in Boston at the time uh, the the bombing and. Uh, I didn't know if I should go out the next day or not to go for a run, but just uh, we were right near the finish line, our hotel, and uh, well, of course, I wanted to keep my my goal intact, so I went out for a run, and it was yeah, it was a, I only lasted a, a mile and a half, but because of my legs were kind of beat up from the full marathon the day before, but it was it was pretty good. Oh, so yeah. you had you had actually run the Boston Marathon the day before? Yes, yeah. And that was the one that the bombing happened. At. That's correct. Yeah, okay. yeah. And now this new information. Did you uh, were you were around when that happened? Or yes, we were. Um, we were actually walking back uh, to our hotel, and uh, we were in the park, approximately six to eight hundred meters away. And um, as we were walking, uh, a couple had asked, us, "Is that a celebration going on at the finish line?" And my wife and I both said, uh, "No, uh, something must have happened." So. Uh, as we proceeded to our hotel, which was uh, not too far, we got into the hotel. I was checking my uh, messages on my phone as all these congratulations for completing. And then uh, shortly thereafter, there's more messages coming. So, are you okay? Is everything mm -hmm. fine? And Ivy had turned the uh, the TV on, and and then lo and behold, CNN was covering uh, what had occurred at the finish line of the the Boston Marathon, and mm -hmm. it was yeah quite devastating to say the least. Wow. So yeah. Yeah. I'll just give a minute for these guys to fly by. It goes a fox. <laughs> See? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> <Right on. clears throat> I'm just gonna give it a minute here. It's probably why they stirred it up. There we go. Okay, we're good. Um. <clears throat> so let's talk about about Winnipeg and the Slurpee Run. Yes. Or is there anything else you want to tell me about yourself? Just, do you have any kids or? No, we don't have any okay. kids. I'm the kid in the family. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been married? Uh, 35 years this oh, year. Wow. Yeah. How did you meet your wife? Uh, so we um, were employed by the same company um, and uh, yeah, I met her through there and I yeah, asked her out for a date and uh, I always kid her. I said, oh, you asked me out and it happened to be at the Red River exhibition at the time. And, Basically, uh, from there on, we had, yeah, we were dating, and then, uh, yeah, we got married in 1980. Nice. <clears throat> yeah, April 26th. Wow. Yeah, wonderful woman. Wonderful woman. Yeah, married a long time. Yeah. How about how long? 30, 30, 35, 35 years. years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It's almost as old as I am. She's my rock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right on. Good, good. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about about uh, the Slurpee Run. Yes. Now, first of all, how did you hear about the Slurpee Run? I was invited. Um, to the event by a couple of friends. Uh, Sorry, just one second. Yeah. I'm going to re-ask that question. Okay. I'm just going to change sure. up here. Uh, would you mind putting the towel maybe uh, just out of view? Yeah, is that okay if it's on the ground? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah. And, and the water bottle, too. Yeah. Just I'm, I'm widening out a okay. little bit. I'm so just going to grab a drink. Yeah, here. you bet. You bet. Yeah. <clears throat> I'd offer you some, but that's it. <laughs> oh, no, no worries. <clears throat> okay, out of the way? Yep. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so I'm just changing up my, my sure. shot here a little bit. Okay, so how did you hear about the the Slurpee Run? 
Uh, I was invited to the event by a couple of friends of mine, and uh, well, and I said, sure, I'll give it a, a whirl, and uh, I'll see how far I can make it. And uh, I, I kept checking the uh, the, the website, uh, the, the site that uh, Scott Burton had created. The Facebook page. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, Facebook page, and I was checking the names and to see if I knew of anyone else. And well, I didn't know too many. I think, boy, is this going to be something else or what? I'm going to meet new friends. So, yes, it. Uh, um, leading up to it, I wasn't sure how I was going to prepare for it. I figured, well, I'll just go as far as I can. And had you run something that length before? No, I haven't. The furthest uh, I've ever run is a, a full marathon, 26.2 miles. And um, I did, I've done some cycling and such a little further distance, but uh, other than that, uh, no. Uh, so I was, I knew I was uh, going to be up, uh, up to something. But when, when I had, when he had uh, noted that it was going to be just anybody that wants to come out, it's just going to be fun and relaxed. So I knew that I was going to be. I thought I was going to be in good hands and it's going to be a lot of fun yeah meet new friends and is it something to something different again for me to challenge uh, a challenge is always there awesome. yes i'm just going to pause for one moment here <clears throat> there we go all right it's looking good oh okay. sounding good. good good okay <clears throat> so um so what do you think about the idea of running to every 7-Eleven in Winnipeg? Well, oh, sorry, I should ask, when I, when, I, when I ask you a question, if you could put my question in your answer. So if I say, when you were, when, what's your birthday? You say, my birthday is yes. blah, blah. Gotcha. So when I say, what do you think about running to every 7-Eleven? Yes. You say, well, when I heard about running to every 7-Eleven, et cetera. Yes. Sure. So when you heard of the concept about running to every 7-Eleven in Winnipeg, sort of as a goofy thing to do for free Slurpee day. Yes. What did you think about that? What was your impression of that? Well, to run to um, run to every 7-Eleven in Winnipeg on the, on the, on on uh, 7-Eleven's birthday, July the 11th, uh, 71.1 miles. I'm thinking to myself, "Wow, this is a great way to see the city of Winnipeg um, and to uh, the different areas of uh, the 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 districts that we have." And for when it started at uh, at midnight, and it was, I felt that well, we're going to run into a lot of good company throughout the night and uh, the day, and uh, yes, and take it from there. So it was, uh, yeah, forty five stores, unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, how did it? <clears throat> tell me a little bit about how you felt when the race was starting. It was midnight. That first store on Regent. What what's in your head? Are you thinking? Okay, I can do this. I can make you know the whole run, or I'm going to go as far as I can, or I might. What were you thinking in your head? Well, that first store that we started at when at midnight there on Regent Avenue, I, I, I there wasn't a lot going through my head. I had just come back from a, a celebration of um, the Stanley Cup win uh, with uh, some friends, and uh, I was certainly uh, kind of thinking about that still. And I'm thinking, oh boy, now for the run. Am I gonna? Am I gonna get through this? Uh, I'll, I'll take it a store at a time and uh, and get through the night for sure. And I had uh, decided I was gonna attempt to do at least 35 uh, miles. Um, I don't know what store number that would have brought me to, but I thought, okay, we'll take it. Uh, we'll take it to that limit, and we'll we'll, we'll go from there. And. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, when you came, because uh, you mentioned a friend had invited you, yes. did you know anyone there already, or did you just show up? Yes, the ones, the yes, I did. Uh, the, when I got to the store to start the uh, the run, I had met uh, a few people that I had known. There was a, a woman by the name of Fiona Fleming. She was uh, she had invited me, and also Jeff Vince. Uh, they're both uh, ultra or good runners themselves. Mm -hmm. They've been. They're well experienced, and uh, yeah, it was uh, there was them, and uh, I must say I don't think I knew anyone else, um, but I certainly got to know many of them along the along the run, which, well, which was fun. Well, let's talk about that when you're when you're on a run like this, and there's you know you have so much time. That's right. I'm just gonna check something here, <clears throat> and you have so much time to talk to people, and because I don't really see people wearing headsets much. Or, m much people are talking and they're just shooting, yes. shooting shit or whatever. Yes. So maybe tell me about that, about how, 
you get to know someone on an ultra run like this? Well, when you're to to really get to know somebody on a, on an ultra run that uh, is taking place, um, you 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 start out at least myself. I kind of start out by introducing myself and uh, getting to getting to uh, know everyone. Uh, I do say that I, I will not remember your name right off the hop, but I'm sure with this length of time that we're going to be together, we'll get to know one another type of thing. So uh, it, what we ended up doing, what I ended up doing is kind of spend time with, uh, try, try to spend time with each one as, as the uh, event went on um, um, throughout the night. And then, uh, and of course, you want to make sure that we stuck together and uh, it was, it was uh, meant to be that way, that you don't leave anybody by themselves. Mm -hmm. So we're all in this together. And anyone that uh, was going to drop out at a store and call it quits, that's that's fine. That's uh, it's great that they were able to join us on this uh, on this uh, great uh, great event. And so while you're running, then I get you mentioned you're trying to talk to each person. Yes. Because you have so much time, right? So do you just kind of slow down and get beside a person and just say, "Hey, I'm Ray." Yes. And just just start chatting. Ab uh, yeah, absolutely. What you do is you you end up beside someone and you you. you you will um, you'll start chatting with the person. Oh, what, what's your name? If I kind of remember, then that's great. Uh, you, and then you start to okay. Well, when did you start running? Uh, what are your you know what what, what do you uh, enjoy doing most type of thing? Uh, um, I didn't ask uh, any personal questions too much. It's, Just chit chat. Mostly. Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah. There's you know there's a few that uh, would certainly uh, expand a little more, and if yeah. they did, so so would I. Yeah. So yeah, it's okay. like, yeah, it's great. Just gonna pause for one moment here. There we go. Just take a look here. Things looking good. Yeah. All right. Cool. So now let's talk about while the run is happening. Yes. Okay. So um, how are you feeling during the first few hours? Um. During the first few hours uh, of the the run, it's it's certainly uh, dark outside, feeling good, uh, getting to uh, you gotta watch uh, certainly watch my footing. It was uh, I didn't bring any lights, but others had lots of lighting. So um, approaching uh, the stores uh, and getting our Slurpees, it was it was it was a lot of fun. It was uh, getting pumped and. Uh, and back out onto the streets again and the, hearing everybody rooting us on type of thing what are you up to and you know, we hear the screams and certainly giving us uh, words of uh, encouragement early on to uh, uh, to carry on and, and getting through the uh, getting through the night and then uh, is was something else and then the sunrise was uh, another uh, certainly interesting uh, uh, start of the day you know it's I, I never thought that it would have come to that uh, that it, yeah you nice to see the uh, sunrise and uh, yeah it's a, lo a lot of fun and uh, we were getting to uh, to many of the stores and I was still feeling very good along the way I was kind of watching everybody else what they were taking in and um, trying to do the same thing and uh, so sure enough it was um, um, it was working out quite well until the Certainly, the heat came up uh, as we were approaching. Uh, I, I don't recall exactly store number, but I'll call it the halfway as at uh, the uh, James Richardson Airport uh, entranceway there. That uh, I think it was around store 26, I think. And uh, then I started to feel a little bit of the heat, but I started to yeah. try to take in more water and such. I think that was, that was around 10 a. Oh yeah, I remember actually because that's when we did our crew change. My my camera guy. Yes. Now it's at seven a.m. I believe. Yes. When we were at the airport. Yes. And yeah, it got hot pretty fast. Yes, it did. Yeah. Yeah. You know for sure. Yeah. So, how do you, how do you manage the heat when you when you when you are on a long run like that? Well, normally uh, I will uh, I will try to I don't carry water with me, so when I'm um, what I do is I make sure I do have a water bottle, but I do uh, at any stop that we that we did along um, along the along this course, I took in as much water as possible. Mm -hmm. um, going down uh, certainly down the stretch of um, uh, Ness Avenue, and 
that was a very uh, I noticed it was tough there and one of our uh, uh, co-runners that had to pull out there and he was, I, was, I stayed with him because he was feeling really really bad mm -hmm. and um, he decided to uh, ask if uh, he can get a ride with uh, a fella a family that was uh, a fellow that was parked on, on the side of the road taking pictures of uh, us running by and mm -hmm. sure enough he was able to get him to the next door mm -hmm. and uh, he was able to recover a little bit there but he did not continue on to the next door he got uh, he got into the support van yeah but, but uh, myself I was um, I was continuing to uh, try to take in water and I was feeling still good um, I was uh, yeah I was I was jumping around I was uh, yeah it was it, for me it was it was pretty good uh, and when did you really start to feel like uh, <laughs> I don't feel good? When did when did that happen? When did you notice that? Well, well not so much when, but how how were you feeling when you started noticing I need to take a break or whatever it's going to be? Um, it was um, as as we we're running. There was there's many times that we were in the uh, in in the open. There was no shade. Um, it was. 35 degrees Celsius, uh, hovering around 40, 41 with the Humidex. And we had um, a stretch from um, Portage uh, and Rouge to handle to take us over the perimeter to uh, Roblin Boulevard and Dale. Uh, and that was pretty hard in the heat. Um, again, we stopped at that, that, that store and took a, a longer break, and we had uh, uh, lots of water and fluids there. Um, and then we carried on, and uh, we had another uh, s another long stretch from um, Roblin and Dale to, uh, I believe it was uh, Charleswood um, Moray, uh, Roblin Moray. There's another 7-Eleven there. And those those ones, uh, I started to really feel something there um, I noticed I wasn't uh, taking in as much water but I was still feeling pretty good um, and then from there to um, from there to running from Charleswood to Academy uh, store through the park down Wellington Crescent I was feeling okay and then when I hit the Academy store I kind of watched and I, I was thinking well I got to make a decision here as to when I'm, I want to stop, because I was getting uh, somewhat uh, uh, concerned, and I felt that I was so close to completing um, two full marathons, and I thought, okay, that's going to be my goal to complete two full marathons now. And I kind of, I was kind of watching from the stores as we were going. I kept checking my watch and the, the distance that we had covered, and I'd be asking um, uh, Crystal. Uh, how far have we gone? So I knew that I was getting close, and that's what I wanted to do: was able to get to 52 miles. And um, f unfortunately, at uh, store 33, I guess it is, Corden and Arbuthnot, I decided I was going to call my wife to pick me up at store 34 on Osborne Street, and. Um, she said yes. She says, "How late? You know, when should I leave the house?" I told her, ten minutes, not to worry. I'll, I will see you there." And as I hung up with her, there was a, a vehicle that pulled up. I recognized the vehicle and I, the plate, and I happened to be a coworker. So he says, "What the heck is going on here, Ray?" He said, "I said, well, we're we're completing a slurpee run." He says, "Are you guys nuts?" He says, uh, "What's the distance?" I says, "Well, here, turn around." It was Scott that was there, Scott Burton. I said, turn around, Scott. And sure enough, he ran. He says, "You guys are crazy." He says, "How far are you gone so far?" I says, "Well, Bert, I've gone, I've gone uh, 52 miles." And then all of a sudden, I says, "Bert, I gotta, I gotta go. I gotta get into support vehicle. I'm done." And uh, I started to feel dizzy. I started to kind of feel very weak. And I, I do remember getting into the support van, doing up my seat belt, and I've lo I lost it everything I didn't know what what was going on until we were approaching store 34 where I was gonna meet my wife and uh, I started to uh, wake up and I'm sure I was giving them directions on how to get to the store but I couldn't see 
um, and uh, then I can hear someone talking to uh, emergency and, I and it dawned on me, I said, uh oh, I think they're talking about myself and now I gotta, you know, help out if they're asking questions. So sure enough, it, Jennifer who was driving I think was asking me the questions and uh, we get to uh, store 34 now I can I can I know what's going on and um, all of a sudden I see a fire truck uh, fireman pull up and uh, he, he's, a, he's at the van and he's asking me a question he says how are you doing I says I'm, <laughs> I'm tired I'm done I just I want to go home I says my wife is here to pick me up so I think I'm just going to go home from here so do you mind if we check a few things out I said, sure. And I checked out the blood pressure. He says, oh, 98 over 68. He says, not very good. He says, I don't think I find a pulse either. I said, you don't find a pulse? I says, come on, I'm talking to you. <laughs> so I knew there was a, I, I knew there was a pulse there. And then finally they checked a couple things out. He says, well, it's very low. I said, yes, I do have a, um, a very low heart rate, a resting heart rate. Um, and then he had, uh, and then a paramedic had showed up and he says, do you mind if we take you into uh, into the ambulance and check you over a few things? I said, sure. I said, let's do it. So uh, he says, just to let you know, he says, uh, you're very low on fluids and we got to help you out here, give you some fluids and we're going to take you to the hospital. I said, well, 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 I says, just a minute here. I says, my wife is, uh, is showing up here and I just got to let her know what's going on. I said, but I'm just tired and I'd rather just go home. He said, well, no. He says, let's go get you checked out. I said, yes. So um, we're about to leave, and I said, well, no. I says, I want to wait for my wife, if you don't mind. He says, no. He says, just give me a description of the vehicle. And then just outside of the ambulance, uh, you can see the windows. Uh, through the windows, I saw her. And sure enough, uh, I said, okay, we'll bring her in. Now this is the time that I thought to myself, oh, boy, I'm going to be in trouble because she's just going to lay it down on me. <laughs> I go, I think, okay, here she comes. And uh, next thing you know, the paramedics are asking her, uh, you know, can you take his stuff? And uh, he's, uh, they told her that I've been responding and everything to the questions and, and having a somewhat of a good time. And uh, uh, he, it wasn't as bad as it, it seemed to be. Mm -hmm. But she gave me a little heck there, yeah, for sure. And it, was, it was a ride to the... St. Bonavis Hospital from uh, from that store. And so what did they uh, do for treatment wise at the hospital? Um, treatment they did at the hospital for me was uh, they, the paramedics had to stay with me for a while until I was uh, released uh, to the uh, to the nurse there uh, which I felt was an extremely long time but unfortunately these things happen. That's uh, how it is. Yeah. Yes and uh, they gave me another um, uh, bag of saline fluid, uh, the paramedics, and then they released me to the nurse about three, four hours later, and uh, they asked if I was okay to walk and uh, wait, in to, wait in the emergency waiting room, and I said, yes, we can do that. Uh, we ended up waiting there a much longer time than uh, I had liked, uh, four plus hours, and uh, finally I went up to the triage nurse, and I says, excuse me, I says, I, I don't think I can wait anymore. I said, I'm ready to go home. I'm feeling really good and I'd just like to go home and have my fluids. So she asked me, says, uh, what's your name? So I gave her my name, Ray Jones. She says, you're the one that everybody's talking about in this hospital. <laughs> Who in the heck would run 52 miles? You can't go home. We want, we want you to be checked out. Just says, one second. Okay. So, <laughs> Sorry, just yeah. <laughs> so they want to make sure you stuck around to get checked out. Yes. <laughs> 15 yeah. miles. Yeah. Uh, I told her it was 71.1 miles. I only lasted 52, so was, but still. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I guess so. Once they actually got you in, did they just give you fluids or what? Yes, they, they did, was. Yeah, what they um, when they took me into the uh, one of the uh, emergency uh, rooms, they started uh, right away. Um, first, they took um, they took a blood test, and they. Uh, and then they hooked up the um, the saline fluid, uh, one liter, and, um, and they, we waited for the test to come back. And he says, "Oh, he says it's kind of, kind of borderline." He says, "We're going to take another one right away, and then uh, we'll send it out again, and we're going to hook up another bottle." So sure enough, uh, they did that. Uh, came back and he says, "Oh, you're still a uh, you're still borderline here." He says, um, "We're going we're going to send that out." So they said, we're going to give you more fluids. 
so they ended up being um, three liters of, uh, of fluids. So I knew I was totally dehydrated, mm. and I was I That's was very very fortunate. And the doctor said to me, he "says You're very very lucky." He says, "Your your kidneys could have shut down, and you would have been in much more mm. trouble." He says, "I'm letting you know right now that is a very serious matter." Mm. And I said, "Yes." Um, he says, I don't want you to run for a week. I says, no exercise? I says, I'm feeling pretty good. He says, no, no exercise. Can I ride a little bit on a bicycle? He says, no, I don't want you to do anything. That's pretty hard for myself to do mm -hmm. something like that, not having to be able to do anything. So um, at, the wor uh, at the university where I work, I decided to uh, take the stairs and do that type of uh, work, but no, just easy, just mm -hmm. uh, for my exercise type yeah. of thing for that week. So it, was, it, it all worked out in the end. And, uh, when we got home, when I got home, actually, I got to thank my wife for uh, being there all the time. And I was the one that was complaining in the being in the bed. She was sitting in a chair for the. T we spent 12 hours in the hospital there. It was like a long time. It's a know. long time. Yeah. So, yeah. mental note: <laughs> drink more water, fluids, and and be look after number one yourself. <laughs> is is that what you think? <clears throat> what what happened was you didn't take in enough fluids during, during the run? Absolutely, okay. uh, I did not take in, uh, take in enough fluids. I, I, and looking back on that, I realized that I, was, um, I wasn't going to the washroom as frequently as I was as early on as we, when we started. But uh, I wasn't going to the washroom and I wasn't taking in the same amount of water. Mm -hmm. I just didn't feel thirsty. I, uh, uh, yes, and uh, okay. just did not feel good. Yeah. It's a lesson learned, I guess, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I, yeah, it's the second time it's happened. Uh, unfortunately, oh, really? it happened in Boston the very first year. Okay. Um, what happened there was uh, there's a fellow that wanted to quit the marathon, and I told him, I said, I, w I don't like to see anybody quit. And I'll walk in the last seven kilometers with you because he was he was leaving the course. He says, okay. He says, you got a deal. So we walked in there, and again, I wasn't taking too much water, but uh, he had uh, we had finished together, and I felt better for that. And, I, and then they took me to the medical tent and gave me a bag of fluid. <laughs> <laughs> so when are you going to learn your lesson? Right? <laughs> 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 it's going to be some time, I guess. I just uh, no limit. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. So, <clears throat> so what? Uh, whose idea was it to do unfinished business? Well. To do unfinished business, I um, I was checking the Facebook page, uh, the Slurpee page, and uh, it was uh, there was questions being raised: uh, Is Ray okay? Is he going to be fine? And uh, as Crystal uh, um, had mentioned, um, uh, uh, Ray had to stop at store number 34, uh, taken to hospital to top up on fluids, and that's when uh, everybody was asking, you know, is he okay? And I. And I and they wished me well, and I and I decided to say, at the end, uh, I, I wish, I uh, uh, thank you all for your uh, your wishes and such. But I still have some unfinished business to do. I certainly uh, commend uh, the three individuals that completed the 71.1 mile run, uh, being uh, Scott, Sue N, and uh, Wade, I believe it is. And uh, as far as I, I was concerned. They are golden, and also the support crew and everybody else um, were awesome. And I says, just for the note, I got unfinished business to do. I am going to complete the last 12 stores um, on on a date that I will uh, certainly share with you if, you're, if anybody wanted to come. And uh, what happened after that, it was like, wow, it's like... Um, Scott Burton says I will join you Ray if you'd like to come and then all of a sudden I heard that the film crew wanted to get involved and the support crew and then uh, runners that were uh, were with us along the course there was Rhonda there was uh, uh, um, Jeff Fiona Maureen there was many of them that uh, certainly wanted to uh, get on board so this is I'm looking forward to it and so with that being the case, how long do you think it's going to take you to run the last 12 stores? Is it how many how many miles is the last that you're finishing? Uh, it's going to be uh, for the last uh, 
12 stores uh, we would again start at Cordon Arbuthnot where I took the uh, where I took the ride mm -hmm. that's where I'm gonna that's where we're gonna start it would be approximately 19 and a half miles from there yeah so to run 19 and a half miles on that day what do you anticipate time wise well we want to do it again at a leisurely pace because yeah. if anybody wants to join us they're more than welcome to mm -hmm. um, I would like to um, I, I didn't really want to commit a time because if uh, like I say, it, it is a fun thing. Yeah. And uh, if you were to estimate, though, I was I was asked uh, uh, what kind of pace we'd be going mm -hmm. at. I, I would say nine to ten minute miles, mm -hmm. and a stop in between. So uh, I, I believe uh, Scott, if we get an early start, uh, we're looking at six a.m. We certainly, mm -hmm. um, if we're going to have the heat, uh, we'd like to get done as soon as possible. Yeah. So let's look at uh, I'm going to say uh, um, four to five hours okay. to complete yeah. uh, to complete the event yeah, for that, myself. Yeah, and that stretch down Pemda, <clears throat> you probably heard like it was really tough for a lot of people. I never heard anything. Oh no! Oh, the stretch down Pemda because there's that one store way down south. Killarney and Pemda. Yeah. Yes, I know and, the area. And yes. there was it was, uh, yeah, that was really tough because it was about two in the afternoon at that point it was so oh, hot it, yes people were you could they were hurting when when did the storm come I, I heard there was some rain that was near the end oh, yeah okay. that was maybe like seven o'clock oh wasn't, okay wasn't, and that people got like a second wind because they were like there's only like three stores left and it's raining and they're cooled, cooled off. off yeah 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 yeah, yeah. So that, that was a that was a nice a nice oh, spot yeah. so well, which you will see yes absolutely <laughs> absolutely you'll get to see all that yes well you, you're asking uh, you, um, the, um, the, the the last 19 and a half miles i know i was expecting that stretch from pemina highway to yeah. be a difficult one so just pause for a second just wait for the wind to, to absolutely to go by here yeah <clears throat> yeah i can imagine that that would have been <laughs> it was good. even in i'm in the air-conditioned van most of the time and it was tough mm -hmm. <laughs> and actually that stretch you were talking about down <clears throat> uh from <clears throat> Roblin from Roblin down to get down to like uh, Cinnamon Park and Academy and, Road and yeah, yeah Cordon. Yeah. I remember me and my crew stopped for a moment there and we're like, I'd made a little video I put on Facebook. Like I was just like I was hurting. I was so tired and hot and sweaty and like, actually that leads me to a question. How do you what do you how do you deal with like I was chafed and I was not running. How do you deal with chafing running on a course like that? You know, like your thighs and stuff. Like um, for uh, you know, for injury wise and getting and for running long distance and getting uh, the chafing and such, it, it I never have had that problem. It was more in the upper body, but it never seemed to bother me. You always wear protection where you, where the rubbing is going to take place, and uh, certainly those uh, those nipple protectors certainly help because. Uh, if you've uh, ever been to a marathon, you've seen finishers. That unfortunately, they uh, they've it comes raw and you're bleeding, just you know under the arm and everywhere that it rubs. But I, for myself, I've I've been very fortunate. I think I believe it's the style of running that I may do that I I don't uh, uh, my arms and legs don't kind of rub together okay. as, as much or slap okay. around. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just I was thinking about that when I got home that day. Like, yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Because I did a lot of running around and yes. And, oh and yeah, stuff. you guys were just unbelievable. Oh, we out were. There. It was great. Yeah, you know, was, you guys really were good. awesome out there. We really enjoyed that. Yeah, you it, know, was, that, it was fun. Know, it was great company. It's. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. You know, it was just super that uh, you'd be coming along uh, Main Street and the camera was <laughs> at our feet or whatever it might be. How are you feeling? We're all like a. <laughs> 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 yeah, for sure. <laughs> So, so unfinished business coming up on oh, on Saturday. Unfinished business, yes, yeah. August the eighth, six a.m. Uh, be there. <laughs> at Cordon and Arp, not. So, I imagine you're pretty optimistic, right? It's nineteen. How, I'm sorry, how long? Nineteen and a half miles. Nineteen and a half miles. Yeah. Oh, that's like a cakewalk to you now, right? Uh, yes. It's like yeah. one for breakfast. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Yes, yeah. That'd be <laughs> for yeah. So on that day, okay, I'm just gonna. I just have to stop the camera. You? Okay, so on that day, what what's it going to do for you to, because you talked about earlier about challenges and that you go for stuff and crazy guy, stuff like that. Why, why are you doing this? 
Uh, to, to to start off, um, to finish the uh, the twelve stores that are remaining of the forty five, I feel that uh, I wanted to complete it to say that I've been able to run to all forty five Seven Eleven stores in Winnipeg, given it's taken two days or we'll say uh, a day and uh, uh, yeah a day and a bit um, it's it's there it's something that uh, I, I, I'd like to complete and say I've done it to all all 45 stores yeah and it's a good training run for the last 12 stores too so it's yeah yeah that's, that's sort of a thing too that we were thinking like uh it's kind of neat to say you went to every similar moon peg. Absolutely. Yeah, there's, you know, there's the, like I say, there's the three that made it, and I want to say that I've made it too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sure that the others uh, that are going to join us, maybe they've done it too already. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, no, I know I can. Yeah, I'm going to do it, and that's yeah, I'm looking so forward to it. How did it feel to see everyone saying, "Hey, I'm going to do it too," and "I'm going to do it too," and then the film crew says, "We want to shoot this for the oh, documentary." You know, for for everybody. The uh, that was involved with the Slurpee run, I mean everybody, the film crew, uh, Scott Burton that created this event, I believe, uh, and all the others, um, the support uh, vans, um, they were just amazing that they decided to to want to join me in this, and I'm just I was just in awe, and, and like I was. Yeah, I'm. I'm just so thankful that they that they wanted to to take part in this, and I will let them know on that day in the morning. Um, I'm certainly uh, going to say a few words before we we start out because uh, they're a big part of it too. And it'll be it'll be uh, a nice way to see more of Winnipeg, right? And I, I know yeah. for us, part <coughs> well, of the appeal, or yeah. not the appeal, but was just we went over. The, everywhere in the city like yes we did everywhere everywhere in the city <laughs> we could say we've been everywhere man you know i guess one one place we probably hadn't been to and then may pop up there eventually is sage creek <laughs> there you go it, it could happen <laughs> that's probably like the only spot well i mean there might be a few but yes but yeah, the yeah. whole city eh? yes yeah incredible yeah. so going through these um, different areas of the city uh, it was quite interesting going through um, the stores on Main Street having to buzz in to get into the store yeah. or something different yeah. um, getting to uh, uh, some of the um, 7-Elevens uh, some of the staff not knowing that we were on this event but we knew that the daytime managers probably knew of the mm -hmm. event. Yeah. yeah, it was something else. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. something that was a bit of a challenge too. I'd go, I had a little piece of paper from Seven Eleven. Yes. So I, I try to get to the stores before we shoot there. Right, right. Just say, okay, this is what we're doing because a lot of them didn't know, right? Yeah. This is the middle of the night. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. The Different shift. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's why I just made sure I had that letter from Seven Eleven just in case we're, we're going to need it. Yeah, very <laughs> good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Is there uh, is there anything else you want to add about it? I I, I think I've asked mostly everything I want to ask. Uh, any final thoughts about either the original run or the upcoming unfinished business? Um, oh, Ashley, sorry, I thought yeah. of a question related. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> like, where else is that going to happen besides Winnipeg? <laughs> that a bunch of people are going to run to every Seven Eleven in in the city and 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 do an event like this. Uh, it seems unique. Well, because being the Manitoba, being the Serb capital role, right? It's, it's like a neat little it, it, goofy it's, thing. Yes, it is. It is uh, for 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 Winnipeg and Manitoba having this, being the Slurpee capital for the last nine, ten years, 15, fifteen years. That is uh, that is a feat in itself, and to uh, to be part of that is uh, is 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 awesome. It's a it's a quirky. Uh, e uh, event that we did, but uh, it, it is something to say that uh, we're proud of uh, being able to to do it. It seemed like an excuse to go for a really long run that's going to make people pass out and sweat. Yes, <laughs> yes, indeed. And, uh, and, uh, and I'm sure some of our 
the ones that completed uh, a lot a lot of the course uh, during the extreme heat and such uh, our spouses would probably think we we're totally off the wall to do these type of things to our body and uh, yeah but uh, they're there for our support still yeah. yeah they'll just have to get over it <laughs> <laughs> they married you right that's right yeah <laughs> absolutely uh, is there anything else you want to add uh no, it's just I want to say like a uh, basically a big thank you to uh, to the the camera crew, to the uh, like again Scott for uh, creating this event and uh, meeting wonderful people along the course and the runners and stuff like that. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Awesome. Yeah, we're good. Well, right on. You know what? Yeah. You stay there. We're